Tonight on Access TV, live live with Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Moody McCarthy, Vladimir Camano, Tim Young, Louis Ramey, and your host, Kevin Pollack. From the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Kevin Pollack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Everyone, just sit down. You're too kind. Normally they stand. Whatever. Hey. What the hell? I'm your host this evening. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, as host, I have a couple duties, first of all. Where are my first timers? Who's here for the very first time? Where are you? All right. That's good. We like first timers. A couple things you should know. If you have a good time tonight, please tell everyone you've ever met to come down here and support comedy at the Gotham Comedy New York, please. This is one of the great venues in the country. It's right here in your backyard. So tell everyone you've ever met to come out here and support comedy if you have a good time. If you do not have a good time, it's possible. Uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Seriously. Nobody cares what you think. And you probably smell, so shut it. Where are my twitches? Somebody was tweeting about coming to the show tonight. Where are my tweeple? Where are you? The rest of you are still working on your farms on Facebook? <laughs> What's it like in 2010? Is it scary? <laughs> I'm not on Facebook because my friends are stupid and I don't give a shit what they do with their lives. <laughs> I'm also not on Facebook because uh, I have no one to stalk. <laughs> and I thought high school was meh. So <laughs> I'm on Twitter because I'm a narcissist <laughs> who clearly needs the attention of total strangers. Yes, if you too suffer from hey, look at me disease, <laughs> Twitter is the place for you. I have over 300,000 followers and no clue what that means. <laughs> I don't, but I've made Kool-Aid and I plan to kill them all. <laughs> Just to teach them a lesson. Don't follow strangers. <laughs> yeah, 300,000 followers, more than Hitler, so suck it. More than more 300,000 followers, and I don't really think I know what I'm doing. I don't think I'm doing it right. Like, I'll start my day with that many followers, and I'll tweet something like, I think I'm going to make a sandwich. And 20 people will tweet reply, what kind of sandwich? <laughs> so, Anna, I got that. <laughs> it's important to be connected with your fans. <laughs> then later in the day, I'll tweet what kind of sandwich I made, and two people go, hmm. I don't know if you can see what I did there, but I started my day with over a quarter of a million people in the palm of my hand and reduced them to two. <laughs> I'm a dick, pretty sure. Pretty sure that's what that means. You know who has the most followers on Twitter? I know it's on a need-to-care basis for most of you. Does anybody want to venture a guess? Somebody said Kim Kardashian. No, but you can check into her ass on Foursquare. I was a mayor for a week. It was scary. Uh, <laughs> Lady Gaga, we have a winner. No more calls. Pencils down. We have a winner. Lady Gaga is the correct answer. Yeah. You know how I feel when I see Lady Gaga perform? 105. <laughs> Why is she dressed like a spider? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> Why is she covered in meat? What the fuck is happening? And I love new music. I'm all about new music. I love indie rock, totally kicking ass in the so-called classic rock I grew up on. I love new music. But the Gaga, I don't get get. <laughs> Why is she all covered up? Right? Because she can sing. She's got a beautiful voice. Yeah, so let's lose the Cirque du Soleil bullshit and sing, honey. <laughs> She's in town now, naked, apparently, finally coming clean. <laughs> Very exciting <laughs> to see her. I had no idea why she was all covered up. Now we understand. I don't know if you grew up a fan of a spy versus spy like I did. So 
Something going on in this area. I can do this all night, by the way. This makes me really happy. Please don't misunderstand. I'm not delusional. I myself have passed in front of a reflecting device. And I realize this is no prize. But I don't have to dress up like an ostrich to get on stage. No, no. Perhaps if I did, though, you'd be enjoying me at a nearby arena. <laughs> You've won this round, Gaga! <laughs> what if she were my arch nemesis? That'd be so fucking awesome. If I was a superhero and Lady Gaga was my enemy. I'd be the Jewish superhero, of course, so I'd be no neck. <laughs> we gotta stop the Gaga. She's holding all the meat. <laughs> I've noted an interesting phenomenon I want to share with you right now. A lot of men, many of you here right here in this room, can now do a flawless impersonation of Robert De Niro. I want to show you how I noticed this. Several years ago, developing trend, this is where men keep their cell phone, right here in the front pocket. Yeah, yeah, that's where the cell phone is now. In fact, if any of you guys still have your cell phone on your belt, let it go, Sheriff. More importantly, if you're recently single, lose the rig, White Earp. All right. So you got the cell phone in the front pocket, you're walking down the street. The Robert De Niro impersonation comes about because the cell phone in your front pocket vibrates. Yeah, it vibrates because somebody's uh, texting you or emailing you or, God forbid, some loser from 2008 is calling. <laughs> Don't fucking call me. Write me, Jagoff. All right. So you're walking down the street, the cell phone vibrates, and that's when the De Niro phase happens. Didn't realize you were doing that, did you, fellas? How about every day? How about every damn day? That's when that's happening. The premise is simple. We're lazy. I'm not going to take the phone all the way out of my pocket. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time. I will simply glance. Uh, now, I started out doing impersonations. That was always a cornerstone of the act. And um, I've now met a lot of these people that I've been impersonating, which was not the plan. You know, the plan was just to mock them <laughs> and in fact, never meet them. <laughs> I tell a lot of stories about these people. Uh, in uh, my first book that came out, actually, which they can throw up a little uh, uh, photo of it, I think, called How I Slept My Way to the Middle. <laughs> so I talk a lot about meeting these people. Um, for example, Christopher Walken. Now, uh, the thing about doing an impersonation is that He's the only one I've, I've done after all these years who stayed with me. And I, once I start doing him, I can't really stop, right? He's one of these people that you wake up in the morning, <laughs> and he's just there, you know. I'll start my day the way you do, open the refrigerator, <laughs> and then it just happens. <laughs> wow. We're out of soy milk. <laughs> this is tragic news <laughs> for the lactose intolerant. <laughs> I wasn't planning a trip to the market today, <laughs> but clearly a drive to Trader Joe's is in my future. <laughs> oh, I hope he's there. One time so that I might say, Harry, Joe. I can't believe you're here. <laughs> I come to your store all the time, Joe. I just never thought I'd see you. Honestly, I'm a big fan. I love this place. I love how you move shit around. It's fantastic. <laughs> Finding a carton of milk is like an Easter egg on. Ooh, there's the cheese, you know. <laughs> Anyways, I got a question for you, Joe. It's more of a concern. What's the deal with all the green bananas? Why must my groceries ripen on my counter? <laughs> I, got, I got a suggestion for you, Joe. It's a possible solution. It's a gift. <laughs> what 
me say you grow your shit before you sell it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Joe. I'm just joking with you. I love your store. Your selection of nuts, for example, is crazy. <laughs> I had no idea so many variety of nuts were available in the world. <laughs> you got them all on four shelves. It's a shit ton of nuts, Joe. <laughs> what do you got, monkeys coming by? You better hope they don't see those green bananas. <laughs> They'll tear this place apart, Joe. Those simian bastards work fast. You'll be shut down by noon. <laughs> That's okay, we're gonna take a little break, come right back. Stay where you are. We'll be right back with a lot more comedy. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Moody McCarthy is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. All right. All right. Welcome back. We got a lot of great comedians for you tonight. Let's get to the first one right now, please. You've seen this guy on Letterman. You're going to love him. Please welcome Moody McCarthy. Oh, Kevin Pollack from the movies right there. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Awesome to be here on Axis TV. I grew up watching this show. <laughs> hey, I got married recently. How exciting is that, everybody? Is that good? Uh, yeah. True. I met my wife online, and uh, we didn't want to tell our parents that because the older generation, you don't know how they're going to react. So we told our parents that we met at the University of Phoenix. <laughs> She's got a real job, by the way, in case you're worried about us. Uh, I don't know what she does, but we have HBO, so I'm very proud of her. <laughs> very proud. <laughs> Different backgrounds a little bit. She's an only child. I'm one of seven kids. So she's kind of, like, interested in, in the logistics of a big family. So she goes, hey, when your whole family gets together, who cooks? I go, hon, here's the deal. My parents are Irish. Irish parents, they have a lot of kids, right? And the hopes that one of them marries an Italian. That's the meal plan right there. That's the meal plan. She is Jewish, though. Do we have some Jewish people here in Manhattan? Could that be possible? There you go. Okay. Yeah. My, Jewish, my Jewish friend tells me when you ask an audience who's Jewish, whatever the reaction is, there's even more. There's other Jewish people who want to know where the joke is going before they commit. So, they're, you know. Now, I grew up in upstate New York, not a lot of Jewish people in my community, so I'm, I'm learning the culture. Here's what I found. With any religion or culture, there's more similarities than there are differences, right? Jewish holiday, Yom Kippur. I asked my wife, I go, hon, how do Jewish people celebrate Yom Kippur? And she said, she said, we don't eat. I go, that's identical to a holiday in my culture, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> we don't eat. There you go. Hey. Right? But then she, then she educated me. It turns out that's a real solemn holiday. I go, oh, I go, sorry. I go, I go, what's the most festive Jewish holiday? And she said, Christmas. I said, yeah. She goes, we get Chinese food and watch a movie. I go, that's better than my Christmas. Now, if you're from a big family and you celebrate Christmas, you might have the system we have. We don't get every sibling a gift. We pick one name. You just get one sibling a gift, right? And it worked out perfect last year. I picked my oldest brother, right? And I'll ask you, what do you think's a good present for someone who owes you money. I got him a gift certificate to me. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Oh, look. That's right. That's what I told him. I told him, I go, that's right, Mark. I go, you remember that 400 you owe me? It's down to 380. Happy holidays. So I grew up in upstate New York. People here from upstate New York? A little bit? There we go. Okay. We drink a lot. We don't drink and drive. We eat ourselves sober at the end of the night, right? I used to work in a bar and had a weight chart on the wall to help you figure out your blood alcohol content, right? And these guys would stagger up to the chart and go, all right, let's see if I can drive. 
I weigh 170. Okay, the chart said I could have four drinks. Jesus, I had 11. <laughs> I got to get up to 235. Okay. All right. Okay. There you go. Okay. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Now, my wife is here from Manhattan. She grew up in Manhattan, married a city girl, right? Now, she can't drive a car like a lot of people who grew up in big cities. So her ID is a non-driving license, right? She's, she's licensed not to drive, right? I told her I got friends upstate who can't drive for six to 12 months, because they, uh, <laughs> Now, a non-driving license, I never saw one before. Here's what made me laugh. There's an expiration date. I don't, I don't, I go, hon, don't let that expire. If that expires, you can't not drive. You have to drive constantly, right? Yeah. To renew it, you'll have to drive to the DMV. Hey, you better take me, because when you renew it, you can't drive the car back. So, heads up. So we live out in the quietest part of New York City. We live in Queens, the borough of Queens, right? There you go. Wow. <laughs> very mellow. It's very, I, live in a, I live in Astoria, Queens. Very quiet. Yeah, right? Very safe neighborhood. If there's any yelling at night, that means someone in Greece scored a goal. All of me. But here's what I love about my wife. She overestimates me. So anytime she walks to the apartment alone, she calls me on the phone so I can protect her. Yeah. And I'm flattered by that, and I'm, uh, I'm a little curious how she thinks I'm going to handle that situation. I, I, I don't know. He's got your purse? Holy shit. Uh, okay, well, uh, put him on the phone. I'll talk to the guy. I'll talk to this guy. Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy, you're there. Hey, give her a purse back, or I'll three-way call the cops right now. He <laughs> gave her the purse back? Good. Hey, uh, hey, don't give her a phone back. She calls too much, all right? Get rid of it. Can you give her? <laughs> so I got a new smartphone. Everyone's got the smartphones. We got the iPhone people here? Oh. Oh, you guys are a cult. That's a cult right there, huh? It's the same people told me Lost was a great TV show. It's the same crowd of weirdos. Same. Now, these phones are all amazing. My smartphones made me realize I have a dumb laptop, right? Because you can get a new phone every two years. My, I can't remember when I bought my laptop. That thing's like 10 years old. Now, here's the difference. Your phone now, if there's an update, for your, your phone will go up to the clouds, get its own update. You don't have to do anything. Here's my computer. Anytime I try to download anything, my computer asked me what program to open it with. <laughs> huh. yeah. well, that's, that's kind of a shit moment when your computer turns to you for computer help. Kind of hoping you being a computer were going to handle the computer decisions. <clears throat> I was going to make French toast, but I'll help you pick bar. <laughs> so just to listen to music, the thing gives me a dozen programs to pick from, and I've eliminated some. So if anyone's worse than me, this might help you out. Don't try to listen to music through Notepad <laughs> or Outlook Express or Minesweeper. <laughs> None of those. Here's my wife's latest thing. You know, my wife just told me, she told me to grow a beard. <laughs> That's a little backhanded, right? Now, if someone has a beard, you can compliment somebody on their beard. But to tell someone with no beard to get one, yeah. what she's really saying is, uh, hey, you know what would help your face? <laughs> Less of it. Yeah, left this, yeah. You should grow a beard. Put on a hoodie and sunglasses. That's how that looks. Easy. Easy there, darling. So I'll leave you this. I'm a big sports fan. I'm a big, big sports fan. I played, uh, I played football in college. How about that? I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I played foosball in college. I'm sorry about that. I... <laughs> no, but I don't go to any sporting events anymore. I just watch them on TV because these new, all these new arenas and stadiums, y'all got the big jumbotron, right? And somebody invented the kiss cam, and that's where the house camera zooms in on a couple, and they force you to kiss. And it scared the hell out of me and my sister at a Knicks game last winter. <laughs> Hey, you guys are a great crowd. That's it for me. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, what a crowd, man. There you go. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Hey. Hey.
Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Vladimir Cabano is taking the stage when we return. Okay, all right. Settle down. Everybody just shut the fuck up already. <laughs> this next guy coming to the stage is fantastic. He got a strange name. Hua. <laughs> That's not his name, but he's got great talent. You've seen him on NBC, stand up for diversity. He's a finalist in that, or was. He's a hilarious comedian. Please welcome. Vladimir, come on, y'all! Yeah, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more. Yeah, that's my cow. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Loving it, loving it. Thank you for the love. I appreciate it. Yeah. Big round of applause for my jacket. Come on, y'all, give it up for this. Yeah. Had to bring out the fake leather, you know what I'm saying? Had to, had to get cute for you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, man. My name is Vladimir. <laughs> I saw the confusion on your faces. You were like, I don't know about that. This guy looks more like a Carlos. I don't know. You sure about that? I'm Dominican. Thank you, all right. Uh, the rest of you guys look offended. You were like, really? Why, why? <laughs> Can't stand bodegas. <laughs> how did I get my name? Everybody's like, how did you get your name? When my dad was a kid, the United States occupied the Dominican Republic. So as a FU to the US, my dad decided to name me after a communist. <laughs> So apparently, I'm a F.U. baby. <laughs> my mother said my dad's first choice in name was Kim Jong-il. <laughs> Be a bit of a stretch, though. <laughs> I was on a blind date a while ago, man. You ever go on a blind date and you wish you were blind? <laughs> they have you, you start singing Ray Charles music, you're like, unchain my heart. They say beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and this girl was unbeholdable. <laughs> it's a blind date, she sees me, right? She goes, are you Vladimir? I said, girl, look at my face. I said, I'm Jose. <laughs> I said, I know picky English, please, please, I don't want. Please, I don't want no problem over here. Please, no problem over here. Okay. <laughs> Turn into my dad quick. But she was aggressive. She was like, what's your sign? I said, I am an exit sign. <laughs> uh, <laughs> deuces. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I got a Russian name, but I don't understand how my dad could give me a name that he can't pronounce. <laughs> like, my dad has a heavy accent, he can't pronounce my name. So instead of saying my name, my dad just makes a noise. <laughs> like, I'm not even lying, this is what my dad does. My dad will see me in the house, and instead of saying Vladimir, this is what he does. Black man, God, coon, you're black! Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> then he gets upset if you don't respond. He's like, blah! And I'm like, like, dude, you said blah. You know what I'm saying? That's not a name. <laughs> That's gibberish, you know what I'm saying? Like, I never forget, I was on a date one time, and this girl was like, hey, do you have any nicknames? I said, yeah, my name is Vladimir, but you can call me, blah, man, I got call you blah! I said, why are you leaving? Why are you leaving the date? Why are you leaving? 
<laughs> was it because of the yelling in public? Is that why? <laughs> why are you walking away? Blah! <laughs> My father cannot pronounce names. That's why I'm just happy he's not like a school teacher. Imagine my dad taking attendance at a middle school. This is my impression of my father taking attendance at a middle school. Okay, everybody, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the class. <laughs> Today, we're gonna see who is inside, okay? <laughs> we're gonna see who's inside over here. Because one thing about Latino men, they love saying the word inside, and they smile after they say it too, like it's a fancy word. Okay, today we're gonna see who is inside, okay? We're gonna see who's inside over here. Why are you smiling like that, man? That's creepy, why are you smiling? I'm gonna see who's inside over here, man, okay? Here we go. My dad's always fixing his pants too. Like, my dad could be butt naked, he'll be fixing his pants. Okay! <laughs> We're gonna see who's inside over here. <laughs> here we go. We're gonna see who's inside over here. Here we go. Okay, number one. Here we go. Here we go. Frap! <laughs> Frano him? <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go. Number two. Here we go. Crap! I don't hear. Oh, yeah, mira, mira, don't do cry. It's not good for you, okay? Don't do the cry. My cousin, he died with the cry. Don't do that. Okay, here we go. Number three. Here we go. P E T E R. Okay, here we go. Pra! Pra no here? Pra! And you know, and you know there's a kid in the back, like, I'm Peter, you yeah? know? That's what I say, coño, I say, pra! <laughs> Pero you don't listen. <laughs> you say, I'm Peter, yeah, okay. <laughs> My father mimics you when he gets upset. Mira, I'm Peter, oh, mira, Peter. I'm taking the crowd, that's the problem over here, man. This crowd is taking the crowd. My dad, I love my dad, man, that's my father, you know what I mean? I never, I never forget, I took my dad to go meet my girlfriend. My girlfriend's, uh, she's African-American, she don't speak no Spanish. And uh, my dad's Dominican, very little English. And I, I love my dad to death, he's my heart and soul, but he could be like most of our family members, he could be a little erratic, you know what I'm saying? So I bring my girlfriend home, my dad got a little tipsy, you know what I mean? Drinking, yeah, you know, having a good time. And I bring my girlfriend, I'm like, Dad, this is my girlfriend, Lindsay. And she, my dad sees her and he starts touching himself. Right when she walks in, he's like, oh my God, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> La tipa ta buena, whoa. <laughs> oh my God, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> Then he looks at me, he goes, tu lo dando, toma. You give it to her like that? Toma, you put it like that? <laughs> oh, you mean, you put it inside? You put it inside over there? I said, Dad, she's standing right here, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, I'm telling you the truth, my dad looks at me and he goes, she no picky Spanish, no problem. <laughs> Toma, la that coño. I said, dude, this is not Spanish, like this is... <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you put it inside of like that? Toma, huh? My dad, though, man. Fuck it out of you, man. I want to leave you guys with a quick joke. Um, I got a call from an Arizona congressman last week. He said, Vlad, I want you to be a comedic immigration officer. So what happens is that I come on stage and I tell jokes in Spanish. I'm like, oye, mi gente, como están? Pa' arriba, pa' abajo, caliente, frío, encendido, tu sal, la gasolina, ajá, mamá, tu papá, el carro, el gato. Then the first person that laughs gets deported. They just kick him out of the country. That's the next one. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live.
from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Tim Young is taking the stage when we return. You think you're having fun now, you're about to have a whole hell of a lot more. Please welcome someone you've already seen on Comedy Central if you were watching, Mr. Tim Young. Ho! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, hello, welcome. New Yorkers are here. Some of you uh, have, don't live in New York. Don't be shocked, we do private things in public here. I walked into the Starbucks, there's a woman having coffee and breastfeeding her baby, which I think is beautiful to be there for that kid's first latte. I think that is very moving. <laughs> I took a picture, I'm not sure that was appropriate, but I shouldn't have tweeted that either, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of you have kids, right? But you're <clears throat> drunk at a comedy club, so you probably don't take good care of them. <laughs> no, some of you. <laughs> I like kids. I like little kids. Not in an Amber Alert way, but <laughs> I can't even say that now. I like three to five-year-olds, because they say weird things that people on drugs say. <laughs> That's the only time I can relate to a child. I was on a bus one time. We pulled into a bus stop. This little three-year-old girl hops up on the seat next to me, looks out the window, and she goes, what world is this? <laughs> How could a three-year-old voice my existential crisis so clearly? <laughs> exactly, three-year-old. We need to go into the woods and do mushrooms together. <laughs> Show me the way, tiny Zen master. <laughs> that is probably illegal to take a three-year-old into the woods for drugs. <laughs> Even if you own it, you can't do that. Applaud if you're on drugs. Anybody on drugs? <laughs> Nobody? Legal, illegal, anybody? Some illegal drugs should be legal. It's hard to know what should and what shouldn't unless you tried them all, which I have. But uh, <laughs> you guys have jobs. You don't have time. Here's a way to figure out what drugs should be legal and what drugs shouldn't. Here's a perfect test. Lock yourself in a room with a person on that drug. See if you're afraid. Would anyone be afraid of a pothead in a locked room? <laughs> Unless you're wearing Krispy Kreme donut pants <laughs> and a pizza hat, that person is no danger. <laughs> what drug would you least like to be locked in a room with? Yell it out. Meth, bath salts? <laughs> I say Viagra. <laughs> At least for me personally. There's nothing more dangerous than a guy looking for a place to put his boner, okay? I'll take my chances with the basalt guy. I can spare a piece of my face. I, I only have one virginity. <laughs> New York is an angry place. People give the finger a lot. The finger has lost its power a little bit. I got a weird road rage sign the other day. I think this guy was trying to be creative and move on from the finger, but he did not think his sign through properly. He was tailgating me. He pulled it right next to me. I expected some angry words with the finger. Instead, he leaned at me in his car and gave me the blowjob mime. He was like... <laughs> that did diffuse my anger. I got to give it to him. I, w I was just confused a little bit. I mean... Pretty sure that means he wants to blow me. <laughs> a generous offer, but not a very angry driver sentiment. <laughs> Maybe if he gave me a bad blow job, my mouth. <laughs> very angry at you. I'm so angry, I will blow you poorly, please. <laughs> Sir, do not give me a chomper twisty. I don't think I would like it. When I'm not in New York, I like to go camping. Any camp campers? <laughs> camping, is a, is camping is easy for people who live in New York because the accommodations are about the same size. 
I camped a little while ago, and in the morning, the ranger came by and, and told me it was time to leave. I was like, well, did I just get kicked out of the outside? <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? <laughs> I camped in upstate New York. There are bears up there. When you camp near bears, you got to use a bear box. Does anyone know what that is? It's a big metal box at the campsite. You put your food inside it, and you lock it up so your food is safe. And then you go to sleep in a tent. <laughs> I don't know who designed that system. I went to sleep in the bear box. <laughs> Left my food in the tent for the bear. Please, bear. Enjoy these grapes and power bars. <laughs> Uh, I'm white. Anybody else? Any white people? <laughs> Not a very popular thing to be right now. <laughs> white people cause a lot of problems these past uh, couple of thousand years. <laughs> cause a lot of problems as it's practically not, not even good to be white anymore. You know, sun's getting hotter, we can't go outside. <laughs> I think that's why the earth is warming up. The earth is literally trying to cook white people. <laughs> Get rid of them. No, it's terrible. It's terrible. A lot of racial tension, racial profiling. How terrible. I can't imagine what it would be like to be under constant suspicion for a crime that you haven't committed. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. I've been in a relationship. <laughs> I know exactly what that's like. I'm sorry. I just got out of a relationship. I was booted out. <laughs> My friends tried to make me feel better by telling me the normal things. Don't worry, they're more fish in the sea. Yeah, but I'm not a fisherman. <laughs> I get the fish to jump into my boat because they're drunk or bipolar. <laughs> Last year, I went to the other side of the world. I went backpacking in India and China and Nepal. Are there any Indians in the room before I make fun of your culture? No, I just want to get the go-ahead. It's a beautiful place, wonderful people. Everyone should go to that side of the world to see where everybody lives. <laughs> there is no one on this side of the world. Oh, my god. You think traffic in New York is bad? Bombay traffic looks like Noah's Ark is having a fire drill, OK? <laughs> I came back. I was there for six weeks. I lost 20 pounds. My friend's like, you might have a tapeworm. You should get it checked out. <laughs> well, I didn't have any health insurance. If you have health insurance, you can go to a doctor. You shit in a jar. They send that away to like the lab or whatever. If you have no health insurance, you have to Google. <laughs> Has anyone tried out the Google health insurance plan? <laughs> the copay is terror. Don't ever Google, do I have a tapeworm? <laughs> and then look at the images section. <laughs> then I Googled, how do you get rid of a tapeworm without going to the doctor? And there are ways. Tapeworms have been around since before doctors, and people have figured out ways. This is one of the ways. You got to get a friend to come into your room while you're sleeping with a flashlight and point it at your butthole. <laughs> and just hang out there and wait. Because apparently the bright light will attract the tapeworm to it. And it'll stick his little head up. Then you got to grab it and pull it out. Yeah. Now, first of all, I don't even have that kind of friend, OK? I don't even know how to make a friend like that, to be honest. I, I can send out a Facebook invite, I guess. Tim has invited you to appear into his asshole with a flashlight. Will you attend? 50 maybes. <laughs> That's it for me, you guys. It's been great. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Louis Rainey is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now.
Hello. Hello. Welcome back. This is exciting for all of us. I feel like dancing. Uh, I'm a hoofer at heart. I kick it old school. All right, coming to the stage now is a great comedian. He was the last comic standing finalist there. Boom. <laughs> Please welcome Louis Grammy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So, uh, I, was, uh, I was recently in Central Canada. If there's one word I would use to describe Central Canada, it would not be diverse. <laughs> it's one of the few places I've ever been where I've actually overheard somebody say, look, another one! <laughs> I told you. People were taking pictures of me with their camera phone. <laughs> Look at that, look at that. Who is it? I don't know, I don't know. Oh, it's Hootie, it's Hootie. So, yes, I did 40 countries last year. I performed in 40 countries last year. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I went to, uh, I went to, uh, I went to China. Amazing, amazing food. Uh, really, really cheap hookers. Went to uh, India, amazing culture. Don't drink the water. <laughs> yeah, you won't be able to trust a sneeze. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Conversation ending diarrhea. <laughs> How's your family? That is so sad. And your mom had an opera. I gotta go. <laughs> and it's amazing. Uh, the most amazing place I went, for the first time, I went to Alaska. And uh, yeah, and I saw a moose for the first time. By applause, who here has ever seen a moose in the wild? Oh! Oh, you've seen a moose? Let me ask you this, yes or no, was it a lot bigger than you thought it would be? <laughs> Hell yeah. They're dinosaurs. <laughs> I thought a moose was the same size as a large horse. I thought this was me petting a moose. You know what this is? This is me rubbing the back of my hand on a moose's balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't like that. They do not like, and, <laughs> and it's strange, because I love it. Um, uh, how it, feels on the back of my hand. Uh, yeah, they feel like peaches that taste like ass. So, I'm in, I, I'm in Alaska, and there's a sign on my hotel door that says, beware of moose. And uh, if you're a New Yorker, you probably would do the same thing I do. I did, I took a picture of it and posted it on Facebook. So, oh my God, look what these hillbillies are dealing with. Um, I wake up at 5 a.m. I decide I'm gonna go to my rental car, go for a little drive, see a little bit of Alaska. I open my door, between me and my rental car is a moose. <laughs> now, if you grew up in an urban area and there's a large mammal between you and your rental car, you probably would do the same thing I did. Ha! <laughs> Get on out here, moose. If you'd read the sign on my hotel door, you would have learned the first three things you're not supposed to do. Make eye, direct eye contact, make any wild body movements, or any loud noises. Ha! I can't even describe what the moose did other than to say it was the most gangster move I've ever seen an animal in the wild do. Yeah, yeah, the moose is over here. It's quiet. It's quiet in Alaska. There's no subways, no, but there's nothing but mosquitoes. <laughs> I come out of the hotel. Ha! And the moose just does this. Just goes. No emotion at all. That was the scary thing. It was, it was like, I'm gonna kill you, here it comes. I don't want to, that's just what I do. You should have read the sign. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Mm. Thank you. 
And now I'm back. Now I'm back in New York, a city. I love New York. I love New York. I love New York. Uh, yeah, is, is my nose brown? Um, I also love New Jersey. I, I like New Jersey. Uh, yeah, well, with a disclaimer of Camden, Trenton, and Newark. Um, and I shouldn't pick on Camden because I've only been there once. Yeah, I had a flat tire. <laughs> Car might still be there. I just got out and started running. Uh, until I saw a bridge and some cheesesteaks. <laughs> and how sad is that for Philadelphia to be your safe haven? Anyway, uh, yeah, city of brotherly love. Yeah, <laughs> your brother's selling crack. So, <laughs> thank you, Philly. So, uh, but I love New York, because you know why I love New York? New York's got some stank on it. Oh. And people that don't know what stank is, let me tell you, when I moved from Atlanta, Georgia, to New York, 12 years ago. I remember I moved here. I didn't know anybody. I go to a drugstore. They have this stuff that cleans the wax out of your ears. You put these drops in, and you fill this thing with warm water, and, and it washes the water out, washes the medicine out. Well, I did it, and uh, apparently the water was too hot, and I burned my ear canal. And that was a bit of a hippie. I was like, let myself, let my body heal itself. And four days later, my ear canal had swollen shut. And all I could hear was my heartbeat. I didn't have any insurance, so I went to a free clinic in a beautiful place called Jamaica, Queens. <laughs> oh, you heard of it. So I go there, and this one cinder block building on the block, that's the clinic. I go inside, I, write, I fill out some forms, she looks in my eyes, takes my blood pressure, looks in my left ear, looks in my right ear, backs up, looks me right in the face, and goes, sir, you have full-blown AIDS. Now, I'm going to stop right now and tell you the three things I know. Number one, I don't have AIDS. Number two, I'm pretty sure that full-blown is not a medical term. And number three, I'm certain you can't tell if somebody's got AIDS by looking in their ears. So being from Georgia, I'm like, ma'am. We're gonna laugh about this later, but <laughs> I don't have AIDS. And she's from New York, so she's like. You got AIDS. Full blown. And I'm like, no, I don't have AIDS. And she's like, you got full blown AIDS. I'm like, no, I don't have AIDS. You got full blown AIDS. And finally I stop her, I go, ma'am, what makes you think I have AIDS? She goes, sir, only babies get full of ear infections that bad, only because, you know, they don't have a fully developed immune system. Because you're an adult and you have an ear infection that bad, that means your immune system has shut down. <laughs> Which means you have full-blown AIDS. <laughs> so I explained everything that happened to me about going to the drugstore and the water being too hot and waiting four days. And she looked at me and she went, yeah, that could be it. I tell you, the, the main reason I love New York, though, especially, especially when the weather, weather's warm, the beautiful women. There are some beautiful women in this city. My God, my God, like, look at you. Oh, my God. I, man, I wish I brought a taser. Um, I say, some guys bring flowers. I need a guarantee. Get in the car. So, uh, no, no, I'm not joking. Stop it, stop it right now. My eyes are up here, Jesus Christ. Oh my God, you keep looking at me like that, you're gonna leave here with a limp and a black baby. Um, all I wanna say to you, sir, is uh, she is really out of your league. Um, and that's a good thing, no guy wants a girl in their league, let's be honest, that's only something women say. You guys make a cute couple, yay. Men, that's not a compliment to a guy. Guys are like, what? You wanna compliment a guy? You go, how the hell did you get that? Which I'm sure you've heard a thousand times. Which, is, which doesn't, I'm not saying you're ugly, but she's beautiful and you own a mirror. So, uh, <laughs> but you're a beautiful car guy, beautiful couple. Don't screw up. My name's Louis Ramey. Thank you very much. <laughs> Louis Ramey. Oh my. Thank you, 
you so much for coming out tonight, New York. Thanks to everybody here at Gotham Comedy New York. They have a great crew and a great staff, and it was a lot of fun for me. Thanks for having me. And I want to bring up some of the performers that you've seen tonight so you can have one last chance at thanking them. I had a great time this evening. And remember, when you're out there on the streets of New York, get yourself some of the food from the cots. Shit that's been cooked two seconds before you arrived. Okay, here they are. Let's welcome them one last time. Moody McCarthy. Vladimir Kalio. Tim Young. Louis Ramey. Vladimir Camano. Vladimir Camano. Thank you all very much. Thanks for coming out. You are my favorite. Right there. No, no, not you. Her. No, not her. You. Yes. <laughs>